What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Today we'll be talking about the running backs I'd be starting and sitting this week. As always, if I don't answer your specific question, you can just look at my exact rankings, which are always updated at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. So we'll get into my rankings in a second, but first, of course, have to start things off as usual, stat of the day. Yesterday's stat was which running back with at least 100 rush attempts has spent the most time on average behind the line of scrimmage? The answer is Nick Chubb. Extreme Kiwi, 28 was first got that right on a YouTube. And at Birch1982 was the first get that right on Twitter. And that is the 10th time that at Birch1982 has gotten it right on Twitter, which means they will join the stat of the day, Hall of Fame. Today's stat. Among running backs this season, Najee Harris has the most targets in a game with 19. Who has the second most? All right, let's talk about some running backs. So first up, we've got Bucks at the football team. This game has a pretty high... 51 and a half point total, one of the higher totals on the week. And the Bucks are nine and a half point road favorites, one of the largest favorites of the week. For the Bucks, Leonard Fournette is seeing strong enough volume that he is a start in any matchup. You're not benching him at this point, especially as a two score favorite with one of the very few or on one of the very few teams with a total north of 30 points and a fairly neutral matchup. Regardless, you're playing Leonard Fournette. For the football team, uh, things are a little bit more difficult to figure out. So we have them going on by this last week. It has given time to Antonio Gibson for him to recover. The problem is he's got this shin injury that like it's it's going to be there all season, right? It didn't just go away during the bye. And so it's going to be something that's going to impact him every single week. The hope is that the bye week gave it at least some time to heal. He's feeling a little bit less pain. Should be good to go this week. I mean, he's going to be good to go this week, but should be a little bit better this week. It's entirely possible that, like, either scenario happens. He could come back, feel incredible, you know, match his, like, highest snapshot of the season, be really good. Or we could go right back to what we saw before the bye, which was a split. Three running backs mixing in. And, you know, a situation against the Bucks where, well, now I don't want to play any of them. So the reality is we don't really know what's going to happen. Hopefully there's some sort of report that comes out on Friday, on Saturday, that gives us some sort of indication as his involvement. To me, that just makes both McKissick and Gibson just low-end running back twos. McKissick, of course, much better in full PPR formats. He has 24 targets over the three weeks leading up to their buy. That's really, really nice volume in a full PPR format. I'm not playing McKissick in a standard format. I'm probably prefer not to play him in half PPR, and it'd be fine to bench all of them. I mean, remember, Tampa Bay is a, a brutal matchup, right? Fourth in rush defense DVOA, second in yards per carry allowed, especially as two score underdogs. This is a bad spot for all of the running backs. So if you're in full PPR, you really need to play McKissick and running back two, you can do it. If you're in any other format and you really need to play Gibson and you're running back two, you can do it. But you know, if you have other options and you're like, can I bench them? Absolutely. Brutal spot. Lions at Steelers is up next. This game has a very low 42 and a half point total. Kind of makes sense. You know, this could turn into a very ugly game. We've got Juju out for the season. We've got Claypool missing some time. They are going to have to run this entire offense through Najee Harris, through Deontay Johnson, through Pat Fairmouth. Like, there's only a few players who are going to get the football, so obviously you're starting on Najee Harris. And then for the Lions, like, you're always starting DeAndre Swift. Uh, this is not a good spot. This is a bad game environment, like I said, but you're starting him. I probably wouldn't play Williams if this game is not going to produce many touchdowns, going to be just really gross with probably a lot of punts. It's not really a spot that you're going out there and you're starting Williams. He's getting more work on the ground than through the air at this point. And I don't know, he's just fine. Like if you're in a 14 to 16 team league, you really need him as a fill-in. Sure, any other format, it just stick to Swift and Harris from this game. Next up, we have Saints at Titans this game has a slightly below average 44 and a half point total and the Titans are currently three point home favorites for the Saints everything's going to depend on the status of Alvin Kamara he has a slight knee sprain but it doesn't seem like it's going to be a long term issue he could miss this week though so like it doesn't seem like the major issue is going to miss like a month does he miss this week does he miss next week i don't think we know yet 
more reports will come out later in the day from me on Thursday, but for you guys on Friday, on Saturday, we're going to know it's a one o'clock game. I wouldn't sweat it. Just, you know, check on the 1130 inactives or honestly, we're definitely going to find out before that. Uh, so just pay attention and it's easy to break down. If Alvin Kamara is out there, I don't care if they say he's going to be like a little bit limited. You're playing Alvin Kamara is good enough to crush on very limited volume. Uh, and then the biggest concern or I guess the biggest question is Ingram, right? If Kamara is out, you're playing Ingram. You don't even need to think about that. You're playing Mark Ingram. If Kamara plays, now watch the reports. Now the reports matter, right? If they say that Kamara is going to be limited, this makes Ingram a viable option, especially because maybe they lean on him in the red zone. So when they get in, you know, into the red zone, into the green zone, they're getting these goal line touches. Maybe they say, hey, Kamara's got this knee injury. Like, we're still going to be using this game, but we would prefer Mark Ingram with the goal line. That could absolutely happen. And so the touchdown upside increases for Ingram if Kamara is limited. And we already know he's getting a few touches on the ground and through the air anyways, even if Kamara is fully healthy. And so watch the reports. Watch how the rankings really adjust based off of the reports. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my take on the Saints situation. And then obviously no other running backs to the Saints. For the Titans, we've got a just gross three-man committee. Uh, this is also one of the three most difficult matchups for running backs. Uh, the positive is that the Titans are favored right now. So that's a good thing. The game script should be solid for them. McNichols is likely your best option in every non-standard format. I would not want him in standard. But if the Titans are, you know, winning... That's not really game script where McNichols crushes, right? He does really well when they're trailing and they need to throw the ball a lot. If they're winning, if this game is competitive, they don't need to throw the ball as much to running backs. And so I wouldn't love him as much if they're winning the game. I'm curious to see if the split between Peterson and Foreman changes this week. The split was 11 touches on 19 snaps for Peterson last week and 5 touches on 12 snaps for Foreman uh, last week as well. Foreman looked better. He looked like the better running back, but it's fair to wonder if Peterson's going to like slowly get his legs under him throughout the season, slowly look better and better because remember this was like his first game back in a while. I know it was the first game for Foreman as well, but you have to think like between the two players, which one is going to be a little bit more rusty when they come in for their first game? Peterson, right? So it's definitely possible that he looks a little bit better each week. But it's also possible that he's just done at this point. Like, I don't think any of us can really know, um, but I kind of want to see it, right? And especially with this being such a bad matchup, you can probably afford to keep both of them on your bench. Um, I think both should be owned in all leagues. But yeah, I think I would prefer not to play them. If you have to play one of them, though, it's definitely Peterson. Uh, he is likely the one... Uh, that would get the most touches between the two, likely, or at least the most likely of the two, to score a touchdown. Uh, but again, just brutal matchup. I would prefer not to play either of them. Falcons at Cowboys is up next. This game has an extremely high 54.5 point total, and the Cowboys are currently 9.5 point home favorites. For Dallas, always start Zeke. He left last week with a little bit of an injury. He was kind of in and out of lineup, but that was mostly because they were just getting blown out. He seems to be fine. You're starting him. Pollard is fine to play as a running back, too. He should see around 8 to 12 touches. Uh, and the Cowboys actually have the highest team total of the week at 32 points. And the Falcons rank 27th in rush defense DVOA, 24th in yards per carry allowed. They've given up the fourth most schedule-adjusted fantasy points to the running back position. This is a really, really good spot for the running backs of Dallas. And so you can absolutely play Pollard as a running back, too. You don't have to. He's not like a high-end, too, or you just can't keep him on the bench. But, you know, a lot of people are struggling in the running back position right now, and I think he's a quality option. For the Falcons, always start Cordero Patterson. And then Mike Davis, I, I just think he needs to be left on benches at this point. Like, ideally, he's not on your team, but if he's on your team, keep him on the bench. Browns at Patriots. Up next, this game has a pretty average 45-point total, and the Patriots are actually two-and-a-half-point home favorites thanks to the COVID and injury situation for the Browns running backs. As of right now, it seems pretty likely the Browns will be without Hunt, Chubb, and Felton. Uh, Hunt from injury, Chubb and Felton due to me on the COVID IR. It is possible that one of those two is able to play this week, at least as of recording this. It's going to depend on their tests. Uh, but the most likely outcome seems to be that Ernest Johnson is going to just be the feature back this week. And if that is the case, 
He should be projected to have one of the highest touch totals on the season. And so if it's the case where all three of those running backs are out, you're playing Johnson. Like, I don't really care what your running back room is. You are playing him. Uh, and he would absolutely just be a smash. But then if Chubb is back, well, just go back to what we were before. If one of these guys can get healthy, it's basically if Chubb's healthy, you're playing him. You're not playing anyone else. If Chubb is out, you're playing Johnson. I guess if Felton returns, it's a ding to both of them. But the most likely outcome here is that Johnson's the only guy that is really able to play in this game. And so you're just, you're absolutely playing him. For the Patriots, we have another situation to watch. Um, Damian Harris and Stevenson both suffered a concussion this last week. So their status is going to impact everything, obviously. If both of them are out, then Bolden becomes a very interesting play at running back two. He would see a lot of receiving game work. He would likely get a lot of goal line work. He'd be a very, very strong play and someone that, I mean, I think should be in your line if both those guys are out. And then if like one of Harris or Stevenson plays, whichever one plays is a quality running back two. And if both of them play, well, nothing changes, right? We go back to what we were before, a pretty large committee in a not so great matchup but it basically is whoever ends up scoring is going to be worth playing you just have to guess who you think is going to score next up we've got bills at jets this game has a slightly above average 48 point total but most of those points are coming on the Bills side since they're 12 and a half point road favorites for the bills we shockingly have another situation to watch there are a ton this week so many situations are going to come down to what news comes out Thursday after I record this, but then mainly Friday and Saturday night and Sunday morning. What news comes out? There are a ton of running backs who have injury situations or there's injury situations to other backs in their backfield that are going to impact things. So another concussion this week, or I guess concussion last week, still has this week, is Zach Moss. Left last week's game early. Currently, as of recording this, he has not practiced yet, has not returned from the concussion protocol. It led to a game last week where Singletary had seven receptions. And if Moss is out again, well, Singletary is a fantastic play in a game that they should dominate, should score a lot of points. Saw last week where that's not a guarantee, right? We thought that, or everyone thought, Buffalo is going to absolutely dominate the Jaguars. Let's inhabit. They lost. And so never assume a game script is 100% locked to happen. But know that this is the Jets, right? They allow points to everyone. And if Buffalo struggles against the Jets, we have large concerns about their offense moving forward. And so this is a great spot. If Moss is out, you're absolutely playing Singletary. If Moss is back, he should be used as a running back too. He'll have reception and touchdown upside. And it would bump Singletary down to a, you know, okay lower end flex play. But someone I prefer to keep on the bench. For the Jets, we get another Mike White game that's very important. It means dump offs for everyone. Um, all the other quarterbacks will throw to the running backs, but Mike White is the one that just dumps everything to the running back position. We've got two games with him starting and finishing this season. Carter has nine and 14 targets, and Johnson has seven and six targets. Tons of targets available to the Jets running backs, especially in a game where they should be trailing for the entire game. I think Buffalo comes out here and hangs 40. They're going to be very upset about last week, and they are not going to look back. They're going to score, 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 and try and just make this a statement win that they are still the best. Well, I don't know if they're the best offense in the NFL, but they're going to try and prove you know that they are. Um, so it should be a trailing script. should be a lot of targets for the Jets running backs. Obviously, it's a horrible matchup on the ground. The Bills have a fantastic run defense, but I don't care, right? I don't really care if Carter's only going to get 10 carries for 30 yards if it's coming with like 8 to 10 targets, right? Those are just so much more valuable than the carries. I think Carter's running back too. I think that Ty Johnson can be played at running back too, but I would much prefer that in like a 14 or 16 team league. If you're in a 10 or 12 team league, you probably don't have to play Ty Johnson, but if you've had a ton of injuries, like maybe you were someone that had like Chubb and Henry or Chubb and some of these other running backs that are missing time and you're like, what do I do? I have no options. If you're in a full PPR league and a 12-team league and that has happened to you, Ty Johnson is not a horrible option this week. It is a horrible matchup. But if you can get four receptions for 40 yards, 
Are you upset about that in a full PPR league when you had no other options? I don't think so. So if you need someone, he's viable. But again, I'd prefer not to. Jaguars at Colts is up next. This game has a 47.5 point total, and the Colts are 10.5 point home favorites. For the Jaguars, this is a really tough spot. Colts rank second in rush defense TVA, 13th in yards per carry allowed, and have given up the fifth fewest uh, schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back position. They are also massive underdogs, projected to score less than 20 points. Bad spot. Despite that, if James Robinson can return this week, and there's no reports that he'll be limited, you're playing him. Any other outcome, he's going to be limited. He's out, and we only have Carlos Hyde. Any other outcome, I simply don't want to play any Jaguars running backs. I know Hyde's going to get a ton of volume, and I suppose he would be fine to use as a very low-end running back, too, in most formats. But again, I prefer not to play anyone besides James Robinson, and it's only if we get reports that he's just good to go, not going to be limited. I will be surprised, though, if we get that report. For the Colts, always start Jonathan Taylor. And if Marlon Mack ends up being inactive, we won't know this probably until Sunday morning. But if you see that come in, Marlon Mack's inactive, you can play Hines as a running back, too. I think he'd be a good running back, too. Um, in the six games that Mack has been active... Hines only averages like less than two receptions, just over three carries per game, not worth the start. In the three games that Mack has been inactive, Hines has five receptions per game and seven carries per game. They are clearly involving Hines more. This offense looks good. This offense looks really, really good using this two running back committee. And so if Mack is inactive, especially in such a great spot, I think you're playing Naheem Hines in most formats and especially in a full PPR format. Panthers at Cardinals. Up next, this game has a 44.5 point total, and the Cardinals are 10.5 point home favorites, despite at this point not knowing if Kyler Murray is going to play. I think that's the lean, is that he is going to play this week. He wants to play, but we'll see. Uh, Of course, you know, confirm that Saturday night, Sunday morning. For the Cardinals, uh, Chase Edmonds has a high ankle sprain, I would guess he's going to miss about a month, and so we get James Conner as close to a featured back. I want to caution one thing that, you know, Benjamin is still going to get touches, so Conner's not going to get, you know, 100% of the touches. Obviously, they weren't expecting Edmonds to get hurt last week, and so, you know, Benjamin wasn't really part of the game plan. He mixed in a little bit, uh, but I would expect his, his role to increase a little bit this week now that they know Chase Edmonds isn't going to play. Um, regardless though, like if you have James Conner, you're absolutely playing as running back one. I don't think you're playing, Eno Benjamin. If you're in a 14 or 16 league and you added him because there's literally no other options and you need a spot start, it's fine because I think they'll involve him more in the receiving game this week. I think they'll get him eight to 10 touches. And so if that's the case, you could do worse, especially on such a good offense. And especially if Kyler is back, if Kyler is not back, it's not as good of a play. Um, but I think the overall take here is that Connors are running back one, locked and loaded. Not going to have 173 and three touchdowns, but a locked and loaded running back one. And, you know, Benjamin will probably end up in that, like, running back 35 to 40 range. So probably out of consideration, 10 and 12 team leagues, viable in 14 and 16 team leagues. For the Panthers, I expect McCaffrey to gain more snaps, more touches every single week. That makes him a must start, and you're just benching all other Panthers running backs. Vikings at Chargers. Up next, this game has an extremely high 53-point total. The Chargers are three-and-a-half-point home favorites. For the Vikings, always start Dalvin Cook. For the Chargers, always start Austin Eckler. The only change here is obviously the Dalvin Cook fiasco. Like My understanding as of right now is that it's a civil case, and so since it's not a criminal case, the NFL is probably just going to take a wait-and-see approach because... Also, at this point, nobody knows what happened, right? And so it doesn't, at this point, unless there's a new charge, make Cook eligible for the commissioner's exempt list. And so that shouldn't happen. He should be good to go. But obviously, this is a developing situation, and you got to pay attention, right? But right now, it seems like Cook's going to play, and if he plays, play him. And then obviously, you know what to do, right? If Cook is ever out, misses any sort of time, Madison needs to be owned in 100% of leagues. He needs to be owned in 100% of leagues regardless. But he needs to be owned in 100% of leagues. 
and played in 100% of leagues for any games that Cook misses. Again, watch the news. Seems right now like he's going to play, but pay attention. Next up, we've got Seahawks at Packers. This game has a high 49.5 point total, and the Packers are 3.5 point home favorites for the Seahawks. Green Bay is like a fairly neutral matchup. They rank 22nd in rush defense TV away and 16th in yards per carry allowed, so that's positive. But they play at such a slow pace that they limit the offensive plays for the opposing team, right? They like to run an offense that's basically, at least when Rodgers is playing, is basically, we're going to be more efficient than you, so we're totally fine limiting the total drives in this game and forcing you to be more efficient than us, and we don't think you will be. That's basically their offensive game plan. So considering this, I would expect the Seahawks running backs to be efficient, to be like good on the per-touch basis, but for the total touches to be lower than most people expect. Uh, regardless, though, my take is basically whenever Carson comes back, whether that's this week or next week, I think you're playing him unless there's some sort of news that he's only going to be, he's going to be like a snap count, like, oh, he's going to play 50% of the snaps, don't play him. Uh, but when he comes back, I would think he'd go back to being a running back too. And you're just not playing any other running back when he comes back. And honestly, even if he's not back, I still don't think I would play any Seahawks running backs. It's not a fantastic spot, and none of them have stood out. It's been a rotation, and so wouldn't play anyone if Carson is out. If Carson is back and it's reported that he'll be a full go, you can play Carson. For the Packers, pretty much the same as always. Always start Aaron Jones, uh, and Dylan is honestly like fine as a running back too. I would prefer to only do that in a 14 or 16 team league, uh, but he has 16 and 12 touches over the last two weeks. He's at times involved in the receiving game, and if Rodgers is back, if they can have a positive game script here, He's looked good. He's looked really, really good, and he's going to score a touchdown at some point. I don't know why they're not using him more in the red zone. He looks like a bowling ball out there. Basically, no one can tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. And so at some point, he's going to score. And when he does score, he's probably going to have, you know, 50 rushing yards, a score, maybe reception. It'd be a good stat line. And so I think he's viable and running back too. Next up, we've got Eagles at Broncos. This game has a 45.5 point total, and the Broncos are three-point home favorites. For the Eagles, uh, this is just a gross committee that I do not want any part of. Jordan Howard has looked solid in back-to-back -back weeks, but he's also faced like you know two of the five best matchups for running backs. Denver ranks now sixth in yards per carry allowed, have given up the seventh fewest schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back position. This game is in Denver. It's not a good spot. It is not a good spot for the Eagles running backs, and it's still rotation. You still know Jordan Howard is not going to have a single target, and so you need 70 and a touchdown on the ground. That is not something I expect to happen from Jordan Howard. I would not play any Eagles running back. For the Broncos, uh, Javonta Williams continues to outplay Melvin Gordon, but Melvin Gordon is playing good enough to retain a role in the offense. The Eagles are a plus matchup by basically every single advanced metric, and being a home favorite is a boost as well. So I think that both Gordon and Williams can be played as a running back to this week. The Sunday night game is going to be Chiefs at Raiders. This game has a high 52-point total, and the Chiefs are 2.5-point road favorites for Kansas City. Clyde was designated to return from the IR. That does not mean he's going to play this week. My guess is that he's out, but if he does return, pay attention to that. Uh, honestly, we're, we're going to know probably on Friday, probably, probably on Saturday. Um, assuming he's out, Drell Williams, he can be played as a running back too. Um, I don't think that uh, Gore is really like that much of a threat. I don't think McKissick is too much of a threat. Williams is going to see a good amount of volume. He'll be involved in the ground, receiving game, goal line. You're playing as running back too. If Clyde does end up being a surprise active this week, then we'll need to see reports on how you know involved they expect him to be. But the most likely outcome is probably that I would just bench all of them. If he's back, it's probably going to be a split between Clyde and Williams. And I'll just want to see that, right, for one week. I want to see, hey, has Williams clearly just carved out a role in the offense and isn't going away? Or is Clyde going to step right back to what he was before? I don't know what's going to happen. But I would expect in his first week back that Clyde's not going to be out there for 100% like of snaps. And so I'll want to see it. And so if he's back, probably bench everyone. For the Raiders, this is a positive matchup. Uh, the spread is also close enough where this game should remain competitive. That's very important for John Jacobs. We hate playing the games where they get behind. Uh, the Chiefs rank below average in basically every single defensive metric. And so positive matchup here. Jacobs, I think, is a high-end running back too this week. 
He's going to have some receptions, good amount of work on the ground, upside to score a touchdown maybe twice. I think you're playing him. Uh, you could actually use Drake as a lower end option this week. They seem to be using him how we thought they would to enter the season. Like we thought he would mix in for some carries, maybe five, seven, eight carries, and then he'd get some work in the receiving game every week. That did not happen to start the season. It has happened recently. And so if they continue doing that, again, pretty high scoring game, good matchup. I think that you could play Drake. It would just be as you know, like a, a lower end option. He's not a must start, uh, but I would say he's fine to use, especially in a full PPR league, as like a lower end running back too. Monday night game going to be Rams at 49ers. This game has a 49 point total, and the Rams are four point road favorites. For the Rams, always start Henderson and continue benching Sony Michel. Uh, he's gotten some run recently, but it's been because Henderson's been banged up for a few drives. Or blowouts, whether they're blowing a team out or getting blown out themselves. They've had a lot of that recently, and that's why Sony's getting work. Under a normal game script with no injuries, Sony doesn't get enough bankable volume to be worth starting. For the 49ers, uh, continue to think that Elijah Mitchell is just a must-start every single week. And unless or until, I guess, one running back, as far as the backups, whether that is Trey Sermon at some point. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, but Trey Sermon, if Jeff Wilson ever starts to get goal line work, you know, if Hasty ever starts to get way more work on the ground, until any of that happens, you're not starting any other 49ers running back and you're absolutely starting Elijah Mitchell. So that is my breakdown of every backfield this week. Remember, you can see my exact rankings under every scoring format and my projections by just looking at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. That, my friends, is the end of this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.